start streaming with that. We'll call the April 9th city council meeting to order. Yeah. You finally give the invitation. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord, and we uh, thank you for everyone's gathering here this evening. Um, Lord, we just ask you to watch over this meeting. Lord, we ask you to uh, comfort those, watch over those who are struggling with sickness, with illness, uh, heartache, whatever it may be. Lord, we just ask you to watch over those who are watching over those who are in pain. Consideration of minutes of the previous meeting. Mr. Allen. Your Honor, I move we approve the minutes of the March 26, 2024 open and closed session minutes that were provided to us. Second. <laughs> Second to amend the, the minutes as outlined by Ms. Hefner. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Elf, would you like to amend, amend your motion? Yes, Your Honor. I'd amend that we approve the minutes uh, as amended uh, previously by Ms. Heckmaster. Second. All right. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes as amended. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Move on to presentations, proclamations. We've got two proclamations, one for Earth Day and one for the Arbor Day celebration. I am not going to read those out loud, but you're Welcome to at a later time. We'll move on to public comments. Anyone wishing to address the council, please step to the podium, uh, state your name and address, and limit your comments to five minutes. Look at this crowd. Hi, I'm Jana Schramm. I'm council person elect for Ward 5. Thank you. I wanted to speak um, about an article that was written by KSN that was on the news, and it was written by Bobby Potteroff. And I called Bobby today to confirm that all the information in it was correct as she knew it. And we were all surprised to learn that Greg Dagnan stated he has a 10-year contract for his employment approved by the mayor. This has never been in the minutes that I had asked for on the hiring or the uh, Sunshine Law request. And when Nate sent that in, he said it did not fall underneath the Sunshine Law request because there was no contract, there was just a negotiation. So it did not require council approval and it would not be a contract until it was signed and ratified by the council at their exit. Well, I wanted to make sure she had it right because it didn't sound like there was a contract, but sure enough, Mr. Dagnan showed her a contract. She saw a contract for 10 years. So I would like to know, and everyone else in the audience, is there a contract for 10 years? And if you've done this, it's against the charter. You want to correct the wording or do you want me to? Uh, 
that, that it's not a 10 year contract. The con what, it, what it read was if discharged within the first 10 years, it must be for cause. Was this there's, in there's, anything there's the council timeline, saw? There's anything. There's a timeline on the contract. Well, it's a contract then, right? Mr. Attorney? It's. I don't know if we're going to be discussing personnel issues in an open session. But he, he gave this contract to the reporter. So if the reporter could see it, we could see it too. And that's where I let it rest, the distrust of this counts of this city administration. Anyone else? Can we get an answer? <coughs> My name is Regina Wells. I live on Maple Street here in Carthage. And my concern is from somebody that used to work fire and ambulance um, for many years in Illinois, whenever we had storms coming, when we had, you know, strong winds were announced, when we had hail, possible tornadoes, we had our lookouts. I was one of them. And as soon as we were notified by the National Weather Service. We had to notify our people in our area. The last storm we had here recently, no sirens went off, none. I saw, and I'm not here to pick on anybody, but we need to correct this problem. We had a lot of innocent people who could have been injured or worse. And this is what I found is written in your, um, I guess, bylaws or whatever you want to call it. So, charter? Carthage operates nine outdoor warning sirens. The sound during severe weather events, including large <laughs> hail, heavy winds, and tornado warnings through the sirens are placed strategically throughout the city. Um, they are designed to warn people who are outdoors, people who are inside may not hear them as air conditioning, thunder, winds, rain, and other conditions can drown out the sound. I very seldom ever heard anybody say they couldn't hear anything because of an air conditioner. But, I mean, that's possible. If you hear sirens, you should get indoors, find shelter, and seek information by following the storm and tornado safety tips. And then it says siren testing. We have a siren in our backyard, and it's supposed to be tested every second Wednesday of every month, unless there are storms going on, they don't want to test it at that time, which is understandable. But you know what? I don't hear them. I may hear three testing a year. That's not every other month. So for the safety of our People in Carthage, which is a city I really enjoy living in, but I'm concerned about my neighbors, and I have elderly neighbors. I have neighbors with small children and babies, and if they're outside, no phones, and if there's no nothing going on, and they're thinking, well, here comes the rain, and it happens to be something else, and no notification, we're going to have a disaster. Look what happened in Joplin. I lived in two different towns in Illinois where we lost it everything the town's completed so this is very 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 important that the council looks into this the mayor looks into this and we need to start that regimen of keeping our citizens safe from storms of all kinds because sometimes people may be out and not have their phones i happen to sometimes leave my phone at home and i'm sure most of you do too once in a while so if you don't realize anything's going on, you're gonna depend on that siren. So I appreciate your time, and I really, really hope you take this very seriously because on the square, we could have lost some lives. I have a family member that lived up there. So yes, it's very dear to my heart, but I also am very concerned about everybody else that lives there, from somebody that used to work fire and ambulance and in an ER. I understand how important every life is. Thank you. 
How you doing, man? I'm doing all right. How are you? Uh, you're kind of doing it a little bit different than what it was when I was here on the... Uh, it's been a day or two. It sure has. <laughs> uh, I was hoping to uh, welcome the new city council to the ones that are outgoing. Farewell. Hopefully you've done your job in accordance with your conscience and what have you. But to the new people coming on board, I just wanted to say, take your responsibility seriously. Your mayor was just coming on when I was leaving. I heard you make several motions here tonight so far already. I never heard one no. Everybody just, yes, yes, yes. Well, when I left, they gave me a certificate of the one individual. <laughs> you remember that, huh? I did. I was the one that would say no. I didn't say no because I wouldn't be hateful against anybody or any council member. I would say no because I felt that it was against my conscience and against what I was elected in my ward to represent my people. To the new people coming on, you're going to go to some training, whether it's going to be in San Louis, Jeff City, or up to Lake of the Ozark. Take that training seriously. Learn from those individuals. If you got yourself elected because of an, one issue, then you may have ran for the wrong reason. If you ran to represent the ward, the people in your ward, and the citizens of Carthage, then you ran for the right reason. Believe me, Kenny Johnson and me went head to head, but we respected each other dearly. And there's a time or two that I even crawled into these culverts out there at the old airport and found things that were not done right when the contractors were putting them in. And I'd take those pictures in there and throw them on Kenny's desk and we would get it fixed. That's the dedication I expect out of the new people coming on board. Represent the safety of your citizens. Represent the ward that elected you. Don't go picking on the police department, CW, Carthage Water and Electric, Parks Department as a one issue. Represent everybody within this city and take it seriously. Thank you for your time. Thank you. to report of standing committees. Budget, Ways, and Means, Chairman Snow. Thank you, Your Honor. Our Budget, Ways, and Means committee meeting was canceled last night, <coughs> but we are still working on putting together the budget, and we'll be having meetings uh, soon to review those department, departmental and capital budgets. So our next regularly scheduled meeting will be the first, uh, second Monday of next month. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Committee on Insurance, Audit, and Claims, Chairperson Blair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Committee on Insurance, Audit, and Claims met this evening here at Carthage Water and Electric. We heard reports from Ms. Cox and Mr. Dagnan about insurance after the latest storm. The city's insurance company, NPR, has been very good to work with, and they sent an adjuster a day after the storm went through, and were very easy to work with. The city had damage to the pro shop, a golf bathroom, the recycling center, the streets department shop and lots of trees. Our insurance rates will probably go up to 30 or 35% more next year to reflect an accurate value of city buildings. And this will impact our budget by about $60,000. Ms. Cox also requested permission to bring a council bill to this committee to allow for upgrades to the current software in code, which will cost about 11,000. This will come out of next year's budget, but there is a wait time and she would like to get the city's name on the list. 
the next meeting is scheduled for April 23rd at 5.30. All right, thank you. Public Safety Committee, Chairman Ella. Thank you, Your Honor. Public Safety Committee is between meetings now. It's tentatively scheduled for uh, April 15th. Thank you. All right, thank you. Public Services Committee. Let's see who's here from the, I guess Ms. Heckmaster, have, you're, <laughs> you're the only one present that's on that committee. We are between meetings. All right, thank you. <laughs> And Public Works Committee. Ms. Blair. Yes. Our meeting was canceled this month due to lack of business. All right, thank you. All right, we'll move on to report of special committees and board liaisons. All right, seeing no, nothing, we'll move on to the mayor's report. Um, we have uh, a resignation letter from David Armstrong, or a resignation. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve his resignation. Mr. Snow. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we accept Mr. Armstrong's letter of resignation. Second. I have a motion and a second to accept the resignation of Chairperson David Armstrong. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And now we have a uh, presentation of plaques for outgoing council members. Let's see here. Looks like Mr. Ellip is first. <coughs> process continues. Um, I was on the square about five in the morning the day after the storm uh, and it was already busy. Uh, then back in town by 9.30 or 10 and uh, the, it was like bees out there. I mean they were already cleaning up things moving forward. Uh, was back watching the drone fly over uh, the following day, uh, looking at the roof's damage on the, around the square. Um, and I, I'm just amazed after every type of situation like this, that the speed and, and the uh, quality of work that, that every city department puts into these things. I mean, it was cleaned up streets were usable again as quickly as possible and uh, I can't thank them enough. We've got the best staff on the planet. So thank you. Sarah. Thank you. Uh, all right, we'll move on to reports of council members. Uh, Mr. Taylor, anything? I don't have anything today except I want to thank the uh, Public Works Department and the Street Department. I live about two blocks from their building. 
and they were out the morning after that storm at 5 a.m. in force. And they were working. And I appreciate it. All right. Ms. Blair, anything? I would add to those comments. We, like we said, got really good workers who care for our city, care for the community, and work hard to make sure we're safe, and also see what for making sure that we had electric and everything was out, that it got put back in. There was a lot of effort to get us back to normal, and I appreciate that from all, all the departments. All right. I too would like to thank all divisions that assisted with the cleanup. While I was in my basement recovering, hoping that I would be okay, you know, many city employees were out in the midst of it, keeping us safe, helping those that were impacted, and I was so grateful, besides the efforts of police, the fire, the street department, that my electricity came on about 3.30 in the morning the following day. So I'm sure many of you had the same sentiment. Thank you to all. Mr. Hope. Uh, I would like to just echo everybody's statements. I thought the response to the storm was great. And uh, Mr. Mayor, fellow council members, thank you for this opportunity to serve. It's been a privilege to get to know so many of you that I hadn't met before. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Snow. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I would also echo the appreciation for our public uh, employees that cleaned up after the storm. I would also like to give a, a recognition or a thanks to Mr. Eddie Schrader. Uh, he brought his equipment out and was cleaning trees on Oak Street and in several other areas in town. And uh, from what I was told, uh, he really helped get some of those streets open by having his equipment available. Uh, also, I would like to uh, I would like to uh, thank the outgoing council members. Um, Mr. Armstrong and I have been on the council for several years. Uh, I appreciated Dave's uh, knowledge of the history of Carthage, and uh, we disagreed a lot, but we could always talk about our disagreements, and we could agree to disagree. So I appreciated that about Dave. I didn't always uh, agree with uh, what he said or what he did, but it didn't uh, affect our friendship. And I hated, I saw, I spoke to him the other day and unfortunately he's completely out of state today. He's not just not here, he's out of state. And so he couldn't be here. But uh, I regret his resignation, but uh, I appreciate his service. I believe seven years is what he served on the council. Uh, Miss Blair. Uh, the last two years, I've gotten to know you, and I appreciate your calm, collected thoughts. And when you spoke, you usually spoke uh, common sense. So, appreciate that, and we miss that from you on the council. Uh, Mr. Holt, I've known Jeff for a long time, and it's uh, been a pleasure having you sit next to me and represent our ward the last few months and thank you for stepping up and, and serving in this vacancy. Mr. Ellen, we've been friends for a long time. I still respect you. I think you're a very good man. Uh, I hope you are able to uh, enjoy your retirement and I'm going to miss your uh, presence on not only the council, but we were also on the budget committee. We were also on the public uh, safety committee and I'm going to miss that. So good luck to you. That's all, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Mr. Just echo the uh, comments of our city staff and the city employees and everything. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Ms. Cossie. So there's not much that I can say that hasn't already been, been said. I also want to thank all of our city employees, all of our departments stepped up, um, fire, police, CWEP, Public Works. Um, I, I appreciate it all so much. Um, and I also would like to thank all of our outgoing council persons for their service. Thank you. All right. We'll move on to the administrative reports. Mr. Daly. <clears throat> Nothing to report tonight. Chief. Right. Chief Hawkins. Nothing tonight, Your Honor. Chief Otley. Yes, sir. Is Regina still here? Is <laughs> Regina <laughs> I take full responsibility. Um, I would love to get your information 
talk with you. Um, without making excuses, I do not want this to be an excuse at all. But this thing crept up so fast. Um, we were all watching radar, National Weather Service was watching it. When we got the warning, it seemed like it was in the middle of it. Uh, and it should have been sounded right there. And we, we take responsibility. I'm not going to answer your question. Very, City since 2008. During that time, I've sacrificed personally, including countless 60 or 70 hour week of duty, and my family, some of whom are here tonight, have sacrificed along with me as I've been away from them. I have literally devoted most of my adult life to the good of this city that I have chosen to love and care for. Um, I've, many people have said, or not many people, it has certainly been said by some people that I'm not qualified for this job. I do have a master's degree in human resources management and I'm writing my dissertation. I've been at City Hall after being police chief for 15 years. I've been at City Hall since 2001. And just a few things that I want to say tonight. First of all, to the outgoing council, it's been an honor to work with you and for you. I truly believe that we'll be lifelong friends after this. Uh, you have a job that is very complicated and difficult and mostly unappreciated. And so I appreciate you all. Thank you. To the new council who is about to be sworn in, not all of you, but some of you have run our platform of supporting some city employees and not others, and endorsing a cleanse of the city, which I don't know what that means other than perhaps getting rid of the key staff. Here are some points that I'd like to address. There's been speech after speech about me being illegally hired. Well, I want to adamantly state that I believe the procedures were followed. I was hired correctly. However, I would also like to point out that I was not in charge of my own hiring. And so, if a mistake was made, I don't think so, but I am not the one liable for it. There was a letter offered to me, and I accepted employment, and to answer your question, under the terms that uh, I am not an at-will employee for the first 10 years. It has nothing to do with how long I stay here, but that in the first 10 years, I can only be fired for cause. There were many emails, which I'd be glad to show anybody, between me and the mayor, expressing my concern that leaving the police department while I had not achieved retirement age was going to be a financially bad idea for me. However, if you read these emails, I was recruited by the mayor and council. They all knew where I lived. They unanimously voted for me to take this position. And I do believe that my hiring was totally legal. By the way, the only person left that was involved in that process is Mr. Snow. Uh, he was involved in my hiring process, and he might be able to fill you in on what happened. Let's talk about my performance. I have never been asked by the mayor or council to do anything different. 
I have received nothing but public praise for my performance by the mayor many times. If someone has a problem with my performance, by ordinance, they must talk to the mayor and express their concerns. I have done nothing wrong. I have employment rights, and I will protect myself and our staff if those rights are violated and our ordinances are not followed. We must run our city with integrity toward our public, but also toward our employees. I've been accused of causing this whole dispute with water and electric. I want to state clearly, I have no supervision power over water and electric. I have no decision-making role in their salaries. I have no decision-making role on their staffing levels. I am, however, the person that submits the budget, and it must be done legally. It was brought to my attention that salaries were not going through the proper process of public money that makes them properly legal. I was worried this would come back to cause more problems for the city. I informed the mayor, the budget committee, and the council, and after that, I have no control over the decision. This problem is fixed now. But I would say, if you want to know what's going to happen next, the mayor wrote a letter to all of the water electric employees in September of 2023. Here is what he said. Our council and I support not reducing pay or benefits for water electric employees, no matter what the salary study says. So I think we know how it's going to turn out. This is not talked about a lot. Let's discuss discuss the ethics laws of our city that say no member of the council of the city or Carthage, I'm quoting directly, shall direct or request the employment or removal from persons of the employment of the city except for through the city administrator or mayor. So, no member of the staff is an elected official. Any performance issues with employees must be discussed with me, if it's, a, if it's an employment issue with someone that I deal with, or if it's me with the mayor. There are clear rules regarding firing officers of the city and elected officials. If you are discussing my performance or anyone's performance publicly, you are violating our ethics code. It is clearly written and easily understood. I suspect that some people might, might want me removed for a reason that is not public, and if that is, a so, if that is so, it's unethical and illegal. Our city has always been known <laughs> Our city has always been known for professionalism in all areas, and now it's become a spectacle of negativity. We are now a team, and I say this to the new council. If you don't want me on your team, that's fine, but there are rules that have to be followed. I would also say to the new council, you have been elected, and some of you have heard rumors or, know, or may think you know what's going on. Every topic, every issue, there's extensive documentation at City Hall. And I would highly recommend that you inform yourself, you come up, you read it all, and you make your decision for yourself after reading the information and becoming informed, rather than just hearing what you thought it said. There's a lot that's public record, there's personal records that are not, and you should read it all. Here's what I would prefer, is that we all put this aside and start working together for the good of the city. Yeah, all right. <laughs> The department heads that you have working for the city and the staff, they are the best people by far that I've ever worked with in my career. They get along, they work as a team, they do their jobs well. If you look around the city and you see what's happened in the last few years, this team, not me, but the team has accomplished things that have never been accomplished before. By continuing the public shenanigans basically, by continuing what is happening, our staff's morale, their mental health, and their effectiveness is being destroyed. And so I will tell you that your staff will give everything they have for the city if you just let them. Thank you, Mayor, for letting me make that statement. All right, thank you. We will move on to your report of claims against the city. The Committee on Claims filed a report in the amount of $2,614,039.94. Ms. Blair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Make a motion to accept the report and allow the claims. A second. I have a motion and a second to accept the report and allow the claims. Any discussion? 
All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, we'll move on to old business. Council Bill 24-21, an ordinance to amend Chapter 2, Article 3, Officers and Employees, by adding Division 10, Assistant City Administrator in the City of Carthage, Missouri. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Council Bill 24-22, an ordinance authorizing the City of Carthage, Missouri to enter into an amended and restated unit power purchase agreement with Missouri Joint Municipal Electric Utility Commission, DBA Missouri Electric Commission. Any discussion? Accept the uh, results of the uh, uh, election results. Second. I have a motion and a second to accept the results of the election. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. I am going to ask for any closing comments from outgoing council members. I wish to make a comment. Mr. L. Thank you, Your Honor. My comments tonight are directed to the employees of the City of Carthage. First of all, thank you for your commitment and service to the city. You're all dedicated to making Carthage the foremost place to live and raise your families. From the utilities personnel, public works and street, parks, police, fire, and administration, you guys are the best. It does not go unnoticed. Mayor, Greg, Tracy, Miranda, Nate, Bill, Ryan, Abby, and unfortunately Zeb isn't here. It's been an honor to serve with you all. Thank you, I appreciate it. It, uh, I am second of all, I'm very disheartened that some of you have been singled out or exploited due to decisions made this past year. Many people have been hurt needlessly by others because of their personal interests. In closing, I want to wish you the best and ask that you keep doing your best so Carthage will continue to grow and prosper. And finally, Greg, thank you for unifying a great group of city department leaders that have done extraordinary things for Carthage. And I'll always appreciate that cup of coffee we had on December 2021. Thank you. Mr. Hull, anything? Uh, well, I would. I have some. Oh, uh, <laughs> that was not intentional. Ms. Blair, anything? Yes, thank you. <laughs> to my fellow council members, it has been a pleasure and an honor to serve with you. It's also made me want to rub my temples and pull my hair out, but that's the beauty of working and living in community with one another. We bring our varied experiences 
and perspectives together and create something better than any one of us can do alone. And hopefully, rub off our rough edges in the process. I'm grateful for your willingness to serve Carthage and look forward to crossing paths in the future. To our newly constituted and restless council, I'm rooting for your success in making wise decisions for our, our city. While my ego is a bit bruised for not being chosen to contribute to these decisions, my desire for good for my family, my friends, and my neighbors outweighs my pride. I will leave you with a few words of unsolicited advice. While the adage, if there's smoke, there's fire, is often true, it isn't always. So please make sure that there is an actual fire before you pull the fire alarm. And if there is a fire, extinguish it. Don't add kerosene. And here I'm gonna put on my professor hat, so please forgive me. Very few people <laughs> in situations are either all good or all bad. We sometimes think in these terms because of a concept in psychology called confirmation bias. Put simply, we don't believe what we see, we see what we believe. Our brains are wired to look for information that confirms our assumptions and to ignore information that challenges those assumptions. Fight against that bias. When you are convinced about something or someone, look again. What might you be missing? What might you be discounting? You're going to need to approach this word with nuance and critical thinking. What may seem simple and obvious now, you will soon realize can be much more complex. Third, I've heard people describe me as being a victim of ca or casualty of the situation. Maybe, maybe not. I stand by the decisions I made about how I would campaign, which perhaps determined my fate well before April 2nd. But if this is how you see me, I urge you to consider how you can avoid other casualties. City Hall and partner organizations are made up of many hardworking individuals who have made significant positive impact on our community, but who have also considered stepping away from their positions due to the conflict over the last year. Don't lose sight of them and risk losing their future contributions as you aim to accomplish your goals. Finally, to my successor, Dustin, I wholeheartedly wish you the best as you take on these responsibilities. War three deserves the very best. Thank you. Your Honor, I move that we uh, recess to allow the new council to uh, this morning. Second. Second. All right, I have a motion to adjourn this first part of the meeting. We'll take about a 10 minute recess. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <laughs>
to new council members. and a second to accept the appointments. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. All right. Next up, election of Mayor Pro Tem. Your Honor, I would like to nominate Alan Snow as Mayor Pro Tem. for election of Mayor Pro Tem. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Allen, welcome. for funds through MoDOT's Transportation Alternatives Program and authorizing the submission of an application relating to the proposed Carthage Sidewalk Improvements Project, Fairview Route E, River, and George Phelps Boulevard, also known as Phase 8 in the City of Carthage, Missouri. Any discussion? Mr. Snow. Your Honor, I move we adopt Resolution 2038. Second. I have a motion and a second to adopt Resolution 2038. Any discussion? Cast your votes. You'll just have to raise your hand. Yeah. New, new folks. Motion yay. Yes. Okay. Karen? Yes. Okay. Nine. All right. All right. Resolution. 
resolution stands adopted. All right, any closing comments, Mr. Peterson? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, uh, I'd first be remiss if I didn't thank the, the citizens of Ward 1 who had the confidence to elect me, the citizens of Carthage that supported me, and my, my wife, Kim, for everything she's uh, helped me with. Um, but with that said, because I believe there might be numerous members of this body who would like to, to speak in this closing comments period, Mayor, I'd move that uh, during our closing comments period here on April 9th, 2024, that any council member may speak for as long as he or she wishes and may make as many motions as he or she uh, wishes as well. Second. So, we would really need a motion to amend the agenda because as our agenda is written, this is the last item on our on our agenda. So, um, would you care to sure, change your motion? Yes, I, I would move that we uh, amend the agenda to include that in any closing comments period of tonight's uh, meeting that all council members can speak for as long as they wish and make as many motions as they wish. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second to amend the agenda as outlined by Mr. Peterson. Any discussion? All in favor to say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion carried. That's all. Anything yeah. further? All right. Mr. Taylor. No comments tonight, sir. I'm sorry. Lord. Yes, I'd like to say first thank you, um, I don't know, to this group of people in this room. Um, you know what's really crazy and what's breaking my heart tonight is that the community is so divided. I love this city and I love people that are sitting on both sides. I don't know everyone, so maybe I'll get to love you too. But my heart is for the city and for what we can do with our city. And I will always do my best to do the right thing. And I just wanted to say, um, I don't know, I've been born, I was born in this building. <laughs> I've been raised here in Carthage. And I work, I have a great job at Mercy Hospital Carthage and I'm pleased to work with all the people that I work with there. And I had some very great leaders that have taught me to look at everybody and listen to everything so that we can make decisions not based on how we feel but what is right and i just urge everyone in this room to look at your neighbor some of you used to be friends and some of you aren't some of you haven't worked through it like the gentleman that spoke before but we all need to work together because carthage is a very special place it's special to me and many of you don't know and i was telling this gentleman over here thank you earlier he was on council when the city donated the land for the current home I live in. And I was the first recipient of a Habitat for Humanity home here in Carthage. And I am thankful to all of you for allowing me to have that safety and that security. And that's what's given me the confidence to do what I want to do and to see what I want to see this city get through. So thank you. I would also like to thank the citizens of Ward 3 for the support, and I, I hope to serve you well. Um, I would also like to echo the comments made earlier. Thank you to all the city staff that cleaned up after the storm. Uh, that was that did not go unnoticed, and, and greatly appreciate everybody's work efforts in that endeavor. Thank you. Ms. Heckmaster? Welcome to all the new city council men and women. Um, I am looking forward to us moving forward with progress with friendly discussions and in unity so that our city can, can um, enjoy more calm. Thank you. I want to thank the uh, 
voters of Ward 4, I'm humbled, I'm honored, even though you didn't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> that many hundreds of people didn't have to vote for me, and I'm, I'm honored, sincerely, truly honored, and will take it very seriously, and uh, have absolutely grown to love this community and its people, and want to do my absolute best in representing the ward and serving Carthage. Mr. Snow? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, according to item 21 on our agenda, I'd like to make a motion according to section 610.021. The agenda includes the possibility of a vote to close part of the meeting to discuss hiring, firing, disciplining, or promoting of particular employees by a public governmental body when personal information about the employee is discussed or recorded. Second. There is an item on the agenda for executive session. Well, it's on one. There wasn't, there wasn't an executive session on the agenda, but if you want to make a motion to amend the agenda. Yes. All right, so do I have a second to amend? Second. The All right, I have a motion and a second to amend the agenda for a possible closed session for hiring, firing. Yes. All right. Um, all in favor, raise your hands. Opposed? passes. Anything further? Well, Your Honor, I believe we can go to the boardroom here in the building for our closed session. You want to have closed session right now? Is that yes, sir. Okay. All right. We will go to closed session.
Well, Your Honor, since we weren't able to have a closed session, I make a motion that we terminate Mr. Dagnan's employment immediately, ask him to turn over all city property, and Ms. Cox serve as interim city manager, uh, city administrator until a new one can be hired. Okay. That's an inappropriate motion and it won't be moved forward. It, excuse me, can you tell me under what ordinance that's an there, inappropriate there motion? Are policy, there are processes and policies to, you must follow, and that's not it. Except that our city administrator, our, our charter specifically says that our city administrator serves at the pleasure of the council. This is an appreciate motion. No, we do not have not, to follow those motions. Yeah, pleasure of the council mm -hmm. and the mayor. It requires six, six council members and the mayor. That's right, that's an and, and I, until you take a vote, you don't know if you have the and. Whether the mayor cares or not, if you get a majority of the city council who does not approve, there is no and. If there is well, an and, in fact, our charter explains it requires both, both, our code explains that it requires both the sixth majority of the council plus the mayor concurring to terminate the city. Yes, that's right. But again, Mr. Dowell, you seem to have some trouble understanding the law here. So the the issue is right. so so the term is and. So that means that both the mayor and the city council have to approve. We do not all have to approve of his resignation or of his termination. We all have to get approve of his continuation as city administrator, and that is what Mr. Snow is calling for a vote for to see if the city council still approves and so that is not an inappropriate motion it is appropriate to motion that that, that vote be taken it's an inappropriate motion because you can not complete the process tonight there's due process to remove a, an officer of the city and this is not the process and can you cite to those codes or that portion of the charter or could our city attorney since that's his job I mean, surely you knew this was coming. I can't imagine you're not prepared. Well, the last time I was asked to research this was two years ago, so that's his domain. Oh. Oh. That, that speaks right. to the foresight of our city. Well, please, please maintain some composure or I'll just clear the room. But I, I would motion that we take a vote on that anyway, regardless of what the mayor says, because no, I believe that the mayor is incorrect. So, it forwarded to whom? For further action. It's the, 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 well, I suppose then I would have to defer to Mr. Snow. Would, would impeachment articles then be appropriate so that we can get this forwarded? I mean, there is an impeachment process, even though it's not in our code, it's, it is in state law. We need a resolution for article. So I would, I would suggest then, I would like to make a motion. I, I know I'm treading on Mr. Snow's time, but I would like to, I would like to move that we have a special city council meeting uh, on Thursday night. That gives us more than 24 hours to consider, we have to name the, we have to state the purpose, to consider removal of our city administrator and to consider articles of impeachment against our mayor. second council meeting of each month depending upon which meeting the majority members of the council voted and the mayor concurred that his employment should be terminated. And you don't mind if we take a moment to research that and make sure that that's not uh, something that, that that's a, a not for cause type of action, right? It's not. It's under 2106, 160 residential district. Part B is for the district. Thank you, so I believe there's a motion on the floor for a special council meeting on Thursday. We can move forward with that. What 
630. I have a motion and a second to schedule a special council meeting on Thursday the 11th at 630. Any discussion? Pardon? It will be in council chambers. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand, please. Opposed? Well, only because I don't understand. Oh, May I ask? Because I'm learning as I go here. Sure. So my question is, I know we have, if that were to be done, we need just cause, as was stated earlier. Mm -hmm. And no one has approached me and told me anything. I have no idea what he's being accused of um, to, to, to solicit this type of thing. And I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm not trying to be against people. But I want us to make sure we're doing the right thing. This goes down in our history of our city. What are we doing? What are we doing? Seriously, every person needs a voice, not just some. Well, Ms. Lease, I believe that when the people voted, that's when they got the opportunity to exercise their voice, and the people that they have voted in right, to sit in the seat. Right, there must have been a special meeting of some groups around here to all of you know all of that, and I don't. To, to know what was going on in the city, you only had to come to a city council I meeting or watch I had city council it. meetings, and I've watched every single one of them online. I did not miss one. So then you I see things, but I don't see proof. I need proof. I'm I, a proof kind of girl. I will say the purpose for me making this motion, yes. or making my original motion, was because I believe that the city is divided. The citizens have lost trust in City Hall, and I believe that the only way that the city can move forward and beginning, begin rebuilding that trust is without Mr. Dagnan as a city administrator. Thank you. I appreciate you. Yeah. And that case, I would be willing to listen and and have a meeting, but I'm not voting for anything that I don't feel that I know. All right. So, at this point, the motion carried, so we'll have a special meeting on Thursday at 6.30 in City Hall. Any business? Nothing else, Your Honor. Anyone else? Go ahead, Jenna. Okay. Um, I, Jana Schramm, would like to thank the citizens for putting me in office. This is not my chair, it's your chair. So thank you so much. And I am <laughs> absolutely positive I'll carry out your wishes as a whole. And I would like to make a motion tonight. I'd like to make a motion to prohibit city employees from speaking to the media, media about city related issues without the approval of the city council members majority or the majority of their their special committees this would exclude the right to speak to the press about concerns or complaints with their terms and conditions of employment which is covered in the national labor relations uh, board second that's an inappropriate motion and 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 you can cite to and I'm curious just what proof can you cite to that that requires okay so then I would like to make a motion to amend my prior motion to add that to our special council meeting on Thursday night I'll second that this motion to the council meeting for Thursday night. For discussion. For discussion. Right. Uh, As a motion and a second. As a resolution. Motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed, anyone? All right. Motion carries. Oh, yes, I do. 
Um, so first, so I understand and I have reviewed the, the code section that Mr. Dowley cited um, and it does say that the termination of employment has to be upon 30 days. However, that section does not address suspension. So I would like to motion that we, that effective immediately we suspend our city administrator, Mr. Dagnan, until such time as the council can meet and make a formal decision and give the proper notice. That means that he is not allowed to perform any job duties or to enter his office at City Hall. I second that. I think the only person who can suspend is the mayor. And again, if you wouldn't mind to cite that code for section for me. <laughs> the mayor has authority to suspend, in addition to that order, following charges, the mayor or the members of council shall have the power to refer, refer written charges of misconduct against any city officer. So at, at this point, um, I, I guess we do probably have to wait until that, that end, until the time that we have that special meeting. However, I do think that this should send a strong message to the fact that we've had this many members vote to have that special meeting. And I would encourage you to, to, to search what is right for the city moving forward. But that is not my, that is certainly not my only motion. Um, my next motion, I would like to motion that the city council uh, have a vote of declaring no confidence in the leadership of Mayor Dan Ryan. I second that. I saw you. You that for me? Yeah, it's a vote of no confidence in our mayor. Right. So what All right, we've got a motion and a second for a vote of no confidence. Any discussion? All in favor, say. I apologize, Mayor. I don't, when I vote, you'll see, I don't have anything that I know of to, at this time of proof, so I wanted to say that. <laughs> okay. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed? All right, motion, that's uh, I would also like to motion that for that special council meeting, uh, that we, we include a closed session to discuss the hiring, firing, disciplining, or promoting of particular employees by a governmental body. When, a, when personal information about the employee is discussed or recorded, that would be pursuant to RSMO 610.021, section three. I second that. I have a motion and a second to include a closed session for the recent outline by Mr. Cossie in Thursday's council meeting. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed? Motion carried. I would also like to motion that the mayor will release the forensic audit related to the investigation of the missing funds or property from the golf course. Uh, to more specifically identify the document, this is the forensic audit which has a release date of November 2023. The full audit document must be supplied to all council members by Thursday, April 11th at 5 p.m. This will be labeled confidential until such time as the city council may deem it to be public record. I second that motion. Yeah, I don't think that we have that authority to do that. The Attorney General now has that. It's either an investigative document which makes it closed, or it's an opinion of record of the third party consultant. It's either an open record or it's an investigative record. We can't close things unless it fits into an exception of the section law, and that isn't one of those. Well, it's not, it's no longer secret. I mean, it is in the hands of the person who's being accused, and so I suppose that if they wanted to, they could release it. They could give it up. I don't know if they've done discovery yet or not. They do. They do. So I would encourage anybody who might have a copy of that report, if you wouldn't mind to forward that to the council, we would be most appreciative. I do have another motion. Um, and so I would like to uh, 
In, I would like to motion that at the special council meeting that the chief of police and all investigating officers of the incident in which our Carthage citizen Mark Peterson was accused of leaving the scene of an accident appear before the council to answer questions and to review evidence in closed session on April 23rd, 2023. I second that motion. <laughs> and so I, um, I guess Mr. Peterson is here. He could probably tell us if if uh, the police report has finally been released to him because it's my understanding that after months and months we we finally did release it. I know at the last council meeting you said that they had not his attorney had not filed a request for discovery in that case at that time. Normally, a police report is public record. You don't normally have to file yeah, that. Yeah. Usually, you can just go Attorney and ask. Attorney of Sunshine, that if you're a defendant, you have to follow the rules of discovery to get the reports and the discovery you can just request from the police department. So, it's, so anyway, once again, um, I guess if, if they do have, if Mr. Peterson does have it in his hands, I suppose that he could he could forward that on to us. I find it interesting that the city doesn't want to be forthcoming even in closed session. I, that's very interesting. So, I do have another motion which should not be confidential and which Mr. Dagnan has been working for some time now on for me. Um, I would like to ask that during that closed session that the police chief, or I'd like to motion, not request, I'd like to motion that the police chief will bring with him at that clo to that closed session a list of all persons who have been arrested within the last five years for leaving the scene of an accident wh during which no personal injury occurred. Um, this list must include a notation of all persons included on the list who were first notified by such, a, such incident by arrest and a notation of which of those persons arrested were already had outstanding warrants. Um, I, I would motion that this section of the meeting be, be part of our closed session meeting per RSMO 610.021, section 14. I second that. Got a motion and a second to you. And that should not be part of an ongoing investigation. That should be part of public record. I mean, I'm just saying it's two days. Well, Mr. Dagnus has been working on this for at least a week, so I would think that they would have some time. All right. Motion in a second. All in favor, raise your hand. I, Mayor, I was just going to mention, I'm sorry I missed it. Because of the familial relationship in this matter, I'm going to abstain. Thank you. All right. All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed? I have another motion. Um, it's going to be a minute, folks. Um, so, it is. So, I also motion that the city council revoke the approval to use the Lauber Law Firm as special counsel for counsel for general municipal matters. Permission was originally granted by council vote on August twenty second, twenty twenty three. Uh, I would also like to further motion then that the city clerk shall notify the law firm the, of this council vote by email no later than 12 p.m. on April 10th, 2024. The assistant city administrator shall further notify the, the law or law firm of such decision by any means as, as or, sorry, by any means if additional means are required per our contract with the firm. I second that. Please repeat that. I couldn't, I didn't understand what your motion was. Sure, I'm happy to make our night a little longer. So, and, and if it helps, uh, I did bring a printed copy. So that would help because okay. we're trying yeah. to keep so minutes here. Some of these will be adjusted, Miranda, for the date now that we have the special council. But if you want, I can just give you a written copy of this. Okay. All right. So, Mayor, would you still like me to repeat that, or is it okay if I just? Give yeah, because I, I I wasn't sure what you said. Okay, so yes, so I would like to motion that the City Council revoke the approval to use the Lauber Law Firm as Special Counsel for General Municipal Matters. Permission was originally granted by Council vote on August 22, 2023. The City Clerk shall notify the Law Firm of this, of this Council vote by email no later than 12 p.m. April 10, 2024. The Assistant City Administrator shall further notify the Lauber Law Firm of such decision by any means if additional means are required by the contract with the firm. Okay. Motion and a 
second. Okay. Got a motion and second. Any discussion? I apologize. I'm, I'm learning as I know here. Could you just explain exactly why why we're doing that? I, I would I would say um, just to keep it short because our nights are already going to be quite long. I I am unhappy with the service that we have received, and I feel that we've not always received the most um, appropriate counsel. I'm not going to do In addition to that, um, I speaking from personal experience. Uh, right now, we we had. We've, we've made an approval to use them as special general counsel and our city, depending, depending on which employee it might be, or the mayor, um, have felt free to just use them with, without getting special permission from the council. And so I, I would also like to see exactly how much we've spent with them, especially given the, you know, surrounding the center action and, and other things. But I think it would be interesting to see how much we've spent with them. But they're basically relying on them as secondary counsel calling them without without getting any permission from the city council to do so other than that general acceptance. And I think that in terms of safeguarding the assets of the citizens, I mean, we're they're spending taxpayer money to do this, and they're, they're doing it at will, and that's what I would like to revoke the ability to do. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed? Motion carried. So another motion. Again, I'm sorry for the length of time. Um, it is hereby motion that neither the mayor nor any city employee may contact any outside law firm regarding city business unless such specific purpose has been approved by a majority of a majority vote of the city council on the state or any date hereafter. This restriction shall remain in place until lifted by a majority vote of the city council. Exempted from this restriction shall be contact pertaining to such matters which are already ongoing and which do not pertain to former or current personnel or city council members. I second that motion. All right. Motion and a second. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> <laughs> Next, uh, it is hereby motion that the city attorney be required to keep a detailed time log of all hours worked and what issues were worked on. Such log unredacted may be accessed by any city council member upon request. Versions may be available, made available to the public which are redacted to exclude information legally permitted by the Sunshine Law to be redacted. I second that motion. Motion in a second. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. So, and I'm also Opposed? just hoping that. Oh, sorry. Please, Mayor, go ahead. Opposed. Mr. Daly, would you mind to repeat your comments into the microphone? Mm -hmm. Well, the question was: Is it violating law since it's an exempt position? I don't know that, so we'll pass it and we'll look and see if that's problem or not. Thank you. All right, um, let's see, let me look over this one. Yes, okay, so yet yeah, one more motion, or it's not just one more motion, I'm sorry, but the, the next motion, it is hereby motion that the city clerk will provide to the city council and for the, for the public city record the minutes of any meeting during which the city council officially approved that the city attorney would be allowed to work only 30 hours per week in exchange for the full salary listed under city attorney in the current salary study. Such documentation shall be presented no later than, than, than uh, I'm sorry, 12 p.m. on Friday, April 12th. I second that motion. <laughs> I've got a motion and a second as outlined. Pardon? That's my line. Sure. Yep, they're already in the minute. So, uh, any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed? Motion carried.
And my final motion, only because I requested this by email a couple of months ago, and it's my understanding that uh, someone at City Hall requested it not be answered, so I'm making this as a motion. Uh, it is hereby motioned that the Assistant City Administrator will provide to the City Council and for the public city record the percentage of the cost of living increases awarded to city employees from the date of approval to the salary study. Minutes of the meeting shall also be produced showing the approval of such amounts. This shall be provided no later than 12 p.m. on Friday, April 12th. Sure. I second that. Motion and a second out of that line. Any discussion? Uh, yes, and I'll keep Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Raise your hand. Sorry. Motion carried. And I know you're all very grateful that was my last motion. So I would like to thank everyone for coming out tonight. And I am looking forward to seeing you on Thursday, two days from now. And I would also like to make a motion to adjourn. All in favor say aye. All in favor say aye. Aye. We are adjourned.